So we have just talked about the properties of the signal sequence that is responsible for targeting the proteins to mitochondria. Now let's talk about the machinery which is present on the mitochondria which enables it mito enables mitochondria to import these proteins. So let's first of all talk about TOM complex. TOM basically stands for translocator outer membrane. So this protein is a complex. It is made up of subunits, part of which is actually receptor and the receptor recognizes the signal sequence and also it binds the signal sequence and then it transfers it to the translocation channel so protein can be threaded. The receptor then transfers the protein to the translocation channel. All proteins are actually initially sent to the matrix space and then after they have reached the matrix space some proteins are sent to intermembrane space if they have an appropriate signal. So TOM complexes they work they work with another channel protein which is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane however the components of this complex span both the inner membrane inner mitochondrial membrane and also the outer mitochondrial membrane as you can see here so these two tom and tim 23 complexes they work in conjunction in importing proteins into the mitochondrial matrix. TIM here stands for the translocator inner membrane. So we have a couple of uh, different type of TIMs. You can see two of them here. One TIM23 complex, the other TIM22 complex. And there's another protein which is called the OXA complex, which is responsible for bringing the proteins, transporting the proteins from the matrix to inner membrane space. So let's talk about these proteins a little bit. Tim and Tom complexes function are coupled to allow protein transport across both the membranes. Simultaneously, both translocators can work independently. So they can work simultaneously or also independently. Tim22 complex mediates insertion of inner membrane proteins. So proteins which are present, which are made in the matrix or which are imported some proteins as you know have to be embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria that contains protein machinery which is responsible for the oxidative reactions which is the primary function of the mitochondria and these enzymes are embedded in the inner membrane of mitochondria and one of the proteins that helps them embed into those membranes is the TIM22 OXA complex mediates insertion of inner membrane proteins synthesized within the mitochondrion also the imported proteins. The N-terminal signal sequence of precursor proteins is recognized by receptors of TOM complex which we saw in the previous slide. The protein is translocated across both the mitochondrial membranes at or near the contact site. So here is a diagram of what I just talked about. Initially the protein is recognized by the receptor protein which is part of the TOM complex. After it has bound this receptor, there's a conformational changes and the receptor then transfers the protein to the, the channel through which the protein can be moved in. Before that happens, TOM complexes interact with TIM complexes in the inner membrane. These two complexes work together and they the protein that has been transferred to the TOM is now is threaded through the hole present or the pore present in the TIM23 complex. So here's the signal sequence you can see. The signal sequence was the one which was initially recognized by the receptor which transferred it to the pore present in TOM and the protein was threaded through and protein can now fold itself in a relevant or in the appropriate configuration and also after it has folded the signal sequence is generally cleaved off. So now we have a mature protein in the matrix of mitochondria and this protein can function provide necessary help to the mitochondria in performing its function. As you can see in the slide that this is directional transport and it has to be directional transport generally involves 
the cellular currency or energy in the form of ATP or high energy bonds. So let's look at the energy, how that requirement is fulfilled. That requirement is fulfilled by three components. First of all, the proteins present in the cytosol, cytoplasm, there are special proteins uh, which are in this case, for example, HSP70, heat shock protein 70. These proteins help this protein, our protein with the signal sequence to be imported into mitochondria in a linear configuration. This process, of course, also costs energy to keep the protein from folding on itself. Additionally, I would like to mention that straight proteins can enter through the TOM complex to the pore of the complex without spending any additional energy. So if you keep a protein in a straight configuration and you deplete the ADP from uh, your system, the protein will still go through the TOM complex. So this part does not require energy directly. It is basically getting the energy from the heat shock proteins or the scaffold proteins which are keeping this protein straight. Now, when we have to import the protein into the, the matrix part of the mitochondria, their energy is required. That energy is provided by three factors. Number one, we have talked about outside the mitochondria, their heat shock proteins keeping the protein in unfolded configuration. When it has to, this protein has to cross the inner membrane, two things help. There is a proton gradient. As we know, there are uh, proton pumps present in the inner membrane and there's a proton gradient and this protein can be transported against that gradient. So that is one way the cell spends or the mitochondria spends energy in importing the protein. Additionally, there are also other type of heat shock proteins which help this protein move in the matrix part of the mitochondria. So the two, two methods, two mechanisms by which it can be accomplished. Let's look at those two mechanisms. So here they are. So one is thermal ratchet model, the other is cross bridge ratchet. So let's talk about the thermal ratchet model. In this, as you can see in TIM23, the protein has gone through the, the channel and it is bound in, as soon as soon it emerges from this pore in the TIM23 complex, the heat shock protein 70, which is present in the mitochondrial matrix, it binds this protein and it prevents it from sliding back out. So in thermal energy, basically, I have mentioned is basically the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So this protein is, is moving in and outside, uh, in and out of a TIM23 complex. As soon as soon it enters, it is, there's a clamp which holds this protein from sliding back out into the, uh, back out into the cytoplasm. So our mitochondrial HSP70 is, hold, is basically acting as a clamp preventing the protein from sliding back into the cytoplasm. As this protein keeps coming in, these clamps keep on adding, these clamps keep on adding and holding the protein. Ultimately, of course, the protein has to be released. That part costs energy. So when the heat shock proteins release this protein, they hydrolyze ATP into ADP. But however, the overall net result is directional transport of mitochondrial protein into the matrix part of the mitochondria. Cross bridge, bridge ratchet is, works on a slightly different principle. The mitochondrial heat shock protein 70 binds the protein as it emerges from the TIM23 complexes. It hydrolyzes ATP energy. It utilizes ADP energy, converts ADP into ADP, and in so doing, the, the conformation of HSP70 changes and it basically tugs or pulls on this membrane. So it is pulling basically this membrane through this pore and the process keeps on repeating till the whole protein has moved into the matrix part of the mitochondria. So we have seen basically two models which allow this protein to enter into the mitochondria matrix. But what about the proteins that have to go in the inner membrane space? Actually, proteins have two sequences, two signals. I, I would like to go back and point it out there on the previous slide also. 
here you can see there are two two domains in this protein the red domain is basically the signal sequence for import of this protein into the mitochondria the purple portion of this protein is basically the signal sequence which tells this protein to go to the inner membrane space so let's look at that process again so as soon as soon the protein emerges or comes into the matrix the red part or the signal sequence has been removed has been cleaved off by signal peptidases that specialize in the function of removing the signal sequence the proteins that have to go into the inner membrane space they have a stretch of hydrophobic amino acids at their amino terminus and this stretch is recognized by the oxa protein oxa proteins also have a channel in them so these proteins are then threaded into the inner membrane space and that's where once they reach that space they are allowed to fold into their normal configuration so the proteins that have to enter the inner membrane space they require two signal sequences and also additionally they require the help from the oxa complex in achieving that goal so we have seen mechanisms how proteins with signal sequence are imported into the mitochondria and some of those proteins that are tagged to go into the inner membrane space how they are transported into the inner membrane space